I have the unenviable position today of addressing all of you after lunch, but I also have the privilege of presenting our institutional clients business to you, one of the world's premier global wholesale platforms in operation today. Over the next 45 minutes or so, I will touch on a few topics covering that business. I'll provide an overview of our franchise, discuss our strategy for continuing to grow our business, and finally, talk about the current efficiency and returns and the factors likely to drive these going forward. On slide one, we show an overview of our franchise. Over the last 12 months, the ICG was a significant contributor to Citigroup overall results, generating $35 billion in revenue and nearly $11 billion in net income, 70% of our total. We operate the largest proprietary payment network in the world with direct connectivity to the financial system in 98 markets. We have clearing and custody capabilities in 63 markets and trading floors in 77. And we facilitate around $4 trillion of transaction flows on a daily basis. Our franchise is client-focused, with our business serving over 80% of Fortune 500 companies. We maintain an industry-leading operating efficiency of 55%, and we generate attractive returns with a return of just over 13% on more than $80 billion of allocated tangible common equity. We are a leader in the global marketplace, with a balance of revenue across banking and markets. We offer a full range of wholesale products, including treasury and trade services, lending, capital raising, advisory, investment research, capital markets execution, and security ser services capabilities. Over the last several years, we've maintained and strengthened our leadership in these franchises, as demonstrated by the industry awards we've earned and by the growing number of areas where we enjoy a top five position or better. We believe we are uniquely positioned to deliver attractive, sustainable returns with an unparalleled global reach and a diverse set of products to serve the growing needs of our clients. We have relationships with the largest and most sophisticated corporations, investors, and financial institutions in the world for whom we serve as a trusted advisor. And we have taken a disciplined approach to resource allocation which has allowed us to serve and grow with these clients while at the same time improving our efficiency ratio. We have also been investing in talent and culture, a culture that is rooted in our commitment to the highest standards of integrity and ethical conduct with a mission of enabling growth and progress around the world. We're proud of our culture and the results that we've produced, but we believe we can capture even greater upside from here. We have a track record of establishing market-leading franchises in areas like fixed income and treasury and trade solutions. And we are applying that same discipline and client focus today in areas where we believe we can drive additional wallet share gains, including equities, investment banking, and security services. We believe this share improvement, combined with modest, growth in the overall market and some tailwind from increasing rates has the potential to deliver over two and a half billion dollars of additional pre-tax earnings over the next few years. And this EBIT improvement should drive our current return on tangible common equity of just over 13% to roughly 14% in the medium term and above 14% longer term. While we are close to this goal now, it will take focus and execution in a number of areas, which I will talk about in greater detail in just a moment. But first, let me briefly cover our franchise position and our strategy, which together serve as the foundation of our future growth. We've shown this map many times in the past, and we continue to believe, and we see the evidence in our results, that our global network 
is what's driving our momentum in our business today. We believe this network, built over the course of our 200-year history and present in 98 markets, cannot be easily replicated by any of our peers in today's environment and gives us a unique competitive advantage in serving large, sophisticated clients. Today, about a third of Fortune 500 companies are domiciled in the emerging markets, up from just 10% 10, 10 years ago. And our proprietary network positions us to serve these emerging market clients as they continue to grow beyond their home regions. More specifically, it positions us well to be the core operating bank for these clients, serving their cash management, foreign exchange, custody, clearing, and other day-to-day -day needs in more markets around the world than any other bank. Our footprint also contributes to our diversification, as no region accounts for more than 40% of our revenue, nor less than 10. And it positions us to capitalize on growth in emerging markets as trade flows between these developing markets represent a growing proportion of global flows. So regardless of where trade flows may shift, we believe we are well positioned to continue to capture opportunity. We offer a full spectrum of products and services to our clients, from recurring transactional support to more strategic, less frequent products like capital raising and M&A advisory. And we are ideally positioned to meet the needs of both corporate and financial institution clients. For our corporate clients, our TTS business is at the heart of our relationship, helping them manage their day-to-day -day cash and working capital needs. And it provides the foundation for adjacent revenues in areas like foreign exchange and rates hedging, as well as more episodic products. For our financial institution clients, security services is the backbone of many of our relationships and leads to revenue opportunities in fixed income and equity markets as well as other products. These core products in TTS, security services, rates and currencies drive nearly 60% of our business and represent areas where we have unique access to large and growing revenue pools due to our proprietary network. As I mentioned earlier, our global network evolved over the course of our 200-year history as we expanded to markets where our clients needed us. And as our clients' footprint expanded beyond the developed markets, so too did ours. Today, about one-third of our revenue is generated in the emerging markets and two-thirds in the developed markets. And when you look at the composition of what we do in each type of market, you can see it's quite different. Our developed markets franchise is likely comparable to some of our peers with a balanced client base and a diversified product mix. Having said that, over 40% of the revenue we generate with our clients is achieved by leveraging our proprietary network. And where we have unique access and scale relative to peers is in the emerging markets, where our footprint and longstanding relationships with the world's largest multinational corporations give us a competitive advantage. Nearly 90% of our emerging markets revenues are generated with multinational corporate clients. And roughly 80% of those revenues are generated through the network in TTS, security services, rates, and foreign exchange. In actuality, given the nature of the business we do in emerging markets, our emerging markets franchise contributes to the stability not the volatility of our overall results. And that's not commonly held. The impact of this target client strategy is evident in our revenue performance, where we are seeing strong growth in those businesses that benefit most from our proprietary network. In total, TTS, security services, rates, and currencies have demonstrated high single-digit revenue growth in constant dollars since 2014, outpacing the rest of our businesses. So while we've faced industry headwinds over the past few years in areas like spread products and fixed income, we've still been able to grow our revenues. And we feel, we feel very good about the underlying momentum in our franchise. As I said, 
Our strategy was developed with our proprietary network in mind, dedicating our resources to clients who truly value our global capabilities. And over the last several years, we have rationalized our client base, going from over 32,000 clients to just under 14,000, improving the focus and intensity of our coverage efforts on those clients that can most benefit from who we are and what we are. Non-financial corporations generate about 40% of our client revenues and include developed market companies expanding globally, particularly into emerging markets, that rely on our global platform and our local execution. And emerging market champions expanding beyond their regions and the capabilities of their local banks. Financial institutions, global investors, and public sector entities comprise the remainder of our client base, generating about 60% of client revenues. Each of these clients is large and sophisticated with a need for integrated global financial solutions. And with our geographic footprint and full product spectrum, we are uniquely positioned to serve them. Consistent with this strategy, over 80% of our corporate client revenues are generated with large multinational companies. And it is clear that these clients value the full footprint that we offer, as over 80% of our network revenue is generated from clients that transact with us outside of the top 60 countries. And our goal is to deepen these existing relationships, serving our clients with more products in more markets. For us, the more complex a client's needs, the better we are able to serve them. And the number of countries in which we serve a client is the best indicator of our revenue and growth potential. For example, in situations where we transact with our clients in more than 40 countries, our revenues average $23 million per client. And those revenues have grown by 11% over the last 12 months. This compares with 3% revenue growth with clients with whom we do business in fewer than 40 countries. Our financial institution clients also employ us across a broad set of products and services. And again, a large portion of our revenues from these clients, a little over half, is generated by leveraging our proprietary network. What's more, about a quarter of our revenues are in products outside of markets, contributing to the stability of our revenues with this client segment. These clients reward truly exemplary service, and since 2008, we have dedicated significant resources to ensuring that we are providing this quality of experience. One place this is reflected is in our recent number one ranking in the latest Greenwich Associates survey for global fixed income. And it's also driven significant wallet share gains over that same period. Another benefit of our strategy of leveraging our network to serve large, sophisticated clients is the quality of our corporate credit portfolio, totaling $586 billion of funded and unfunded exposure. While we lead with the network, we also lend to our most important clients to serve their funding needs and broaden our relationships. The portfolio is well diversified by market and industry, and over 80% of the exposure is rated investment grade, reflecting the credit quality of the underlying borrowers, as well as the terms and structures of the transactions themselves. We've seen this quality reflected in the portfolio's credit performance, with an average annual loss rate of just five basis points over the last five years. Our global footprint positions us well to serve both traditional global businesses as well as next generation clients. Many of our relationships span multiple decades, some over 100 years, during which time we've helped our clients grow and expand into new markets. These are valuable, long-standing relationships and highly important to our franchise. And because we are an integral part of their core day-to-day -day operations, we should continue to grow with these clients. And today we're also seeing a new generation of clients that are becoming global at an unprecedented pace. 
So the global footprint that a traditional client may have built over 40 or 50 years is being replicated in a fraction of that time. And by companies who may have less infrastructure to support that rapid growth. Here, City is a unique partner, providing the platform and local market expertise for these companies to expand wherever they find opportunity around the world. And our revenue opportunity tracks this rapid pace of growth, allowing us to generate revenues in line with our longest standing relationships in a much shorter period of time. On slide 16, we show one such example. As you can see, our relationship with this client began in just 2013 with a dialogue around cash management with the Chinese subsidiary of a US-based company. And over the course of the next four years, we grew with this client, expanding our relationship to over 10 countries and broadening to more than 20 products, including more episodic products like debt underwriting and M&A advisory. As a result, we grew our revenues with this client to over 10 times the amount generated in the first year of the relationship. This is a great example of the opportunities we are seeing today with these next generation clients as they grow geographically at a pace far faster than we've ever seen in the past. And as such, they require sophisticated solutions that City's proprietary platform can provide. On slide 17, we show another example, another next generation client, this one domiciled in the emerging markets. In the case of this client, our relationship began in 2010 with modest revenue as we began to provide cash management solutions. Over the next six years, we capitalized on strategic episodic opportunities in equity and debt underwriting, all the while growing our recurring revenues in the network products. We grew these revenues by providing key operating solutions in cash management and working capital finance in more than 10 countries. And as a result, we saw significant grow growth in our recurring revenue over that period. Many of our competitors are capable only of competing for the more episodic revenue. Whereas we are well positioned to compete for both the episodic as well as the more valuable recurring opportunities. The value we provide to our clients is evidenced in how they view us. We believe that a third of our top clients consider us to be their most important banking partner, capturing a very high share of their fee wallet. Close to another 20% of clients consider us one of their most important banking partners. We are striving every day to become the single most important partner for an even greater portion of our target clients. And we believe we have made progress over time in up-tiering our relationships. The potential upside is significant. Given the size of our target client's collective wallet, a further 1% increase in wallet share would equate to incremental revenue of roughly one and a half billion dollars. While we have grown our revenues in wallet share over time, we have done so with a focus on expense discipline that has allowed us to support our clients and invest in the business, while also improving our efficiency ratio to an industry leading 55%. We've reduced front office capacity in certain areas to ensure that we are right sized in the current environment, we have simplified our organizational structure, and we have streamlined our middle and back office operations. We've accomplished this by centralizing staff and moving resources away from high cost locations, by automating and simplifying our processes, and by simplifying our technology platform, requiring fewer applications and data centers to support our business. These savings have allowed us to focus on more client-facing technologies, enhancing the client experience through better digital and online, uh, digital and other self-service solutions, which I'll discuss in a moment. Now I'd like to share with you our path to realizing our upside potential. We believe the playbook for realizing our target return on tangible common equity of roughly 14% in the medium term is achievable and straightforward. 
Contributing to higher returns are a number of factors. The first is revenue growth, which we expect to be driven by a combination of modest growth in revenue pools, an improving economy, which should bring with it higher interest rates and investment, sh and investment, share and investment driven share gains. Altogether, we expect revenue to grow at roughly 4% annually, which is in line with the growth rate we've been able to achieve since 2014. This revenue growth should drive significant operating leverage as we continue to automate and simplify our operations to fund our investments and offset the impact of volume growth. We expect this net revenue growth to be partially offset by credit normalization and somewhat higher capital levels as the business grows. This combination of revenue growth, positive operating leverage, and credit discipline is powerful with the potential by 2020 to generate over two and a half billion dollars in additional EBIT and a return of roughly 14% on the more than 80 billion dollars of tangible common equity we allocate to the ICJ. Today we generate returns of just over 13% with the majority of our businesses already generating attractive returns in excess of our cost of capital and we enjoy the strongest returns in some of our largest businesses. Our path forward is to strengthen and extend our leadership positions while growing in areas like equities, where we believe we can capture additional rev revenue opportunities that will improve earnings power and returns. And we are doing just that with a demonstrated track record of extending our leading positions in our largest businesses fixed income, and TTS. And we are making progress in growing our wallet share in both equities and investment banking. These are both businesses with strong return potential where additional revenues should create significant operating leverage. Revenue growth is an important component of our path to a 14% return. We expect about 35% of our revenue growth to come from overall market growth, representing about a 2% annual increase in wholesale revenue pools, and about 20% to come from an improving economic environment and the accompanying higher rate forecast that John described in his presentation this morning. And we expect the remaining 45% of revenue growth, or just over $2 billion, to come from growth in our wallet share representing an estimated 75 to 100 basis point increase in overall share. Whether it is achieved by extending leadership positions in areas like TTS or fixed income, or by closing the gap in equities. At the same time, we will continue to improve the efficiency of our business through ongoing investments in technology and automation, as well as continued migration to lower cost locations. Cost of credit should be a modest offset as it is expected to normalize from somewhat favorable levels. This combination of revenue growth and positive operating leverage is expected to deliver an additional two and a half billion dollars in EBIT by 2020. We expect all of our businesses to contribute to the revenue growth that we are projecting. In TTS, we are investing in technology to drive additional share gains by enhancing the client experience through our City Direct BE corporate banking platform, which gives our clients seamless access to their operating accounts anywhere at any time. And in fixed income, where we already enjoy a significant market share position, this growth will be more dependent on overall market growth and other macro factors, including interest rates. While in other businesses, we believe we should be able to outpace the growth in the overall market to create our own opportunities, such as in equities, where we expect to capitalize in investments in talent, technology, and balance sheet to close the gap to our top tier competitors. We also expect to capitalize on the strategic investments we have made in investment banking to drive wallet share gains in key sectors where we see opportunity. And we plan to continue to leverage our unique global footprint in security services to win mandates with target clients while also benefiting from higher rates. 
And in the private bank, we plan to continue to augment our strength in banking and lending with growth in wealth management and capital markets. Across the board, we are investing to enhance the client experience by leveraging technology to improve the ease of execution, including in self-service channels. And hopefully you saw some of these initiatives today in action around the room, where we're showcasing our City Direct BE corporate banking platform, our City Velocity uh, platform for markets clients, and our digital banking platform in view for the private bank. Now, I'd like to spend some time on each one of our businesses, starting with TTS. TTS connects our clients to the banking system around the world and is the most obvious beneficiary of City's proprietary footprint, allowing us to provide better, more comprehensive solutions to our global clients. Our TTS franchise is the leader in working capital management, global cash management, and trade finance services to multinational corporations, financial institutions, and public sector organizations. As you can see on the bottom left, our revenues are diversified across products and regions and have grown at an annual rate of 3% since 2012, mostly reflecting volume growth and market share gains given the sustained low interest rate environment over that period. We capture significant volumes in this business, including commercial credit card spend of over $40 billion in the last 12 months. TTS is also a tremendous source of high quality corporate deposits, having grown 8% annually since 2012 to over $400 billion today. At its heart, TTS is a solutions driven franchise with a focus on the continuous enhancement of client experience through the development of new technologies and digital interfaces. One of these technologies, City Direct BE, which has been showcased here today, is the foundation of our client experience strategy, a single global platform that provides access to payments and receivables, liquidity management services, trade and foreign exchange solutions. It is transforming the client experience via click-through global access to an intuitive and user-friendly interface. On this platform, we support clients in over 135 currencies and 26 different languages. Transactions and approvals, including reports and inquiries designed to monitor trends and increase visibility, are available across three seamless channels, online, mobile, and tablet, leading to improved client self-service and efficiency. City Direct BE Mobile's applications allow the CFO and treasurers of a multinational corporation to continue to manage their daily treasury needs anytime and anywhere, whether they are in the office or traveling, with the same level of security and efficiency regardless of which device they have at hand. We've seen rapid adoption of the technology over the last five years, with volumes growing from just $1 billion in 2012 to over $2 trillion over the last 12 months on our mobile platform alone. Turning to fixed income, which is our single largest business segment within ICG and a true leader in the global marketplace, where we have continued to consolidate share as others have retrenched. As you can see on the bottom right, we've improved or maintained our rank in all of our FIC businesses over the last several years. And in 2016, we enjoyed a top three position in all of our businesses. This represents a significant improvement in a number of products, including commodities, where we grew from a number nine ranking in 2012 to a number two ranking, which was achieved through disciplined efforts with targeted corporate and investor clients and a core set of products and services. And we do not own any, do we, not, we do not own or operate any physical commodity facilities. As you can see on the bottom left, our fixed income revenues are diversified by client with 34% attributable to corporate clients, which is directly tied to the strength of both our global network and our TTS business. These corporate revenues have been more stable over time 
and are also highly dependable as we are managing these clients' operating accounts across more countries and regions than any peer can offer. And they contribute to our strength in rates and currencies, where over 40% of our client revenues are generated with corporate clients, creating greater stability to those aggregate revenues as well. We continue to enhance our market-leading franchise by leveraging technology and focusing on client experience. One example is City Velocity, our industry-leading analytics and trading platform, which provides our clients with unparalleled access to City's research, including proprietary analytics and product-specific models, as well as trading capabilities for foreign exchange, interest rate, commodity, and futures products. While we have included it here as part of our fixed income markets business, the access to research, commentary, data, and analytics is just as important to our equity market participants. And City Velocity has received over 50 industry awards, including those for most innovative and best overall single dealer platform. Another example of innovation is City FX Pulse, our end to end global foreign exchange solution for corporate clients. Together, our Velocity and Pulse platforms are utilized by over 125,000 unique users in more than 130 countries. Turning to our equities business, we believe it is positioned to grow after recent pressure on the revenue pool across the industry. Over the last couple of years, we've made investments in people, making key hires in management, sales, and research, in technology, improving our internal and client-facing platforms, and in balance sheet. Growing client balances in areas such as prime brokerage and Delta One derivatives by roughly 40% since the beginning of 2014. And as you can see in the chart on the bottom right, even as the revenue pool for cash equities has remained under pressure, our above average industry growth in both derivatives and prime brokerage has allowed us to grow our revenues by 4% annually since 2012, while the industry has largely remained flat. Historically, we have maintained a number eight or nine rank among peers in equity markets revenue. With the targeted investments that I just mentioned, we have seen early signs of progress with our rank improving to number seven. As you can see in the chart on the bottom left, our, from our current position, the gap between us and the number five market position represents an annual revenue opportunity of approximately $700 million. We believe our goal to achieve a number five rank in the medium term is both realistic and credible, and more representative of our natural competitive position relative to both our fixed income rank and our rank in equity underwriting, as shown on the top left. In investment banking, our goal is to be a trusted advisor to the world's largest and most global firms. We are continuing to drive wallet share growth with our target market clients and are making selective investments in talent to strengthen and defend our wallet share in key sectors, including technology, financial institutions, and energy, as well as in select countries. To this end, we have demonstrated 5% revenue growth since 2012, which outpaced the target market wallet growth over that same period. We have increased our overall wallet share to 5.2%, and our share in our target market has grown from 7.9% in 2012 to 8.8%, which included gains in technology, real estate, industrials, and financial institutions. In security services, we provide security settlement, clearing, custody, and asset servicing to institutional clients in 63 markets, the largest direct custody and clearing footprint among our peers. We view the security services business as similar TTS in many ways, providing the core operating infrastructure for our investor clients to grow and transact around the world. And over the last several years, we have been executing a multi-year effort to improve efficiency and reorient the business to drive sticky client relationships and accretive returns. We have rationalized our offerings and exited non-core businesses, focusing on our key clients and our core product strategy. 
while at the same time, we have invested in automation and robotics to improve our platforms and drive efficiency. The strategy has translated into several high-profile client wins, such as those with Norges Bank and John Hancock, and has driven significant growth in both revenues, up 7% annually since 2012, as well as operating margin, which has improved over $500 million over that period. Going forward, our strategy is to continue to leverage our proprietary 63-country network to pursue further opportunities with these clients. And finally, turning to our private bank. Our organizational model differs from many of our peers. As we include our private bank as part of our institutional business, rather than a separate wealth management division. Our business targets the ultra high net worth segment, clients around the world with at least $25 million of household net worth. The connection with the rest of ICG affords our ultra high net worth clients the ability to leverage the same expertise provided to multinational corporations and large sophisticated investors. This integrated approach has led to continued strength in new client acquisitions, as well as the deepening of our client relationships, resulting in diversification across our revenues and steady growth in loans, deposits, and assets under management, and annual revenue growth of 4% since 2012. To better demonstrate the integrated approach we've taken with the increasingly global needs of our private bank clients, here, we've laid out an example. Citi's total relationship with this particular client spans across four markets in three regions, utilizing products and services offered not just by our private bank, but also by markets, TTS, and the consumer bank through foreign exchange trading, capital markets opportunities, and credit cards. And while the revenue recorded in our private bank segment was attractive on a standalone basis, it accounted for only half of the total revenue generated by this client, with the remainder attributed to synergistic revenues in the other areas. And while this is only one example, there is a rapidly growing number of such global clients at the private bank who value our full platform across geographies and businesses. Now, while I have covered many topics here today, I want to leave you with a few key thoughts. First, our institutional franchise has an unparalleled global reach and is a franchise which is difficult to replicate, putting us in a unique position to serve our target clients. By leveraging this differentiating factor, we expect to continue to grow revenue with our traditional clients and with the rapidly evolving next generation of global businesses. We have tremendous upside potential ahead as we continue to deepen client relations, becoming an increasingly important and trusted banking partner. What's more, we have a proven track record of establishing market-leading businesses, such as in TTS and fixed income. We are leveraging that experience and our capabilities to continue to make targeted share gains in investment banking and to close the revenue gap in equities. Our disciplined approach in serving our clients in a cost-effective, responsible manner has allowed us in recent years to deliver industry-leading efficiency and returns. And we believe that we are well positioned to deliver attractive and sustainable returns in each of our businesses going forward. We feel confident that this strategy can deliver EBIT growth of over $2.5 billion and a return on tangible common equity greater than 14%.